What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here and moving on to the next video, the next property that we're going to talk about for functions. In this particular video, we're going to talk about intervals of increase and decrease. And this one's not going to be too bad, but initially it takes a little bit getting used to of how to write these intervals and then how to spot them on certain functions. And so I'm going to do my best to explain it initially and then we'll do a bunch of different examples so you could see how it gets implemented. And the weird thing, quote unquote, with intervals of increase and decrease is there's two parts to it. What you wanna do is you wanna look at the behavior of the Y values, and I'll elaborate that in a second. So for intervals of increase and decrease, you look at the behavior of the Y values, but here's what's weird, is when you write the actual interval, you write it in terms of the X values, and that's what messes up students sometimes. You have to look at the behavior of the Y values, but when you actually write the interval, it's not in terms of the Y values, it's gonna be in terms of the X values. And what I mean, when I'm talking about the behavior of the Y values, here's the question that you wanna ask yourself here in green. Are the Y values increasing or decreasing, or increasing meaning are they going up or are they going down as you read from left to right? That is key right there. Okay, you gotta be reading from left to right and as you're reading from left to right, are the values increasing or decreasing. So if we do an example, let's maybe start with the simple y is equal to x squared graph, right? So that's just going to be a parabola. It has the vertex at the origin 0 and 0. So how would we state the intervals of increase and decrease for this particular function? Well again, we start from reading left to right. So we're going to start here and read what's happening to the function, what's the behavior of the y values going left to right? And notice that what's happening is that the y values are decreasing, right? As we read from left to right. Even though this is going upwards this way, right? And that's what sometimes confuses students. So you may think just by looking at this, your brain might say, oh, because you see this arrow here that this is like increasing, but remember, this is the key, right? You're reading from left to right, okay? So if you're reading from left to right, even though you got the arrow here on the function, what's actually happening to the Y values is that they are decreasing, okay? So there's going to be a decreasing interval, okay, and then Here's what's weird. We have to write it in terms of the X values. Okay, so the Y values are decreasing, but on what interval of the X values is that happening? Well, this extends all the way to negative infinity, right? So in terms of the X values, it's happening from negative infinity all the way to this X value of zero. Because once it hits zero, that's basically the vertex there. And at that particular point on the vertex, the function isn't increasing or decreasing at that point. It's sort of neutral. It's actually changing from a decreasing interval to an increasing interval. So any like maximums or minimum values, also something called like saddle points, which is a little bit uh, more rare. Maximums, minimums, it's not increasing or decreasing, it's actually changing, it's a turning point, okay? So going back to this here, let me take this off. Um, the function here is decreasing, the Y values are going down from X values, negative infinity to zero and not including the zero, so we put a circle bracket like that right? The function is decreasing from negative infinity to zero. At zero, it's turning, okay? So it's not increasing or decreasing there. It's neutral. And then as we keep reading from left to right, the y values are increasing. 
after that. So after we're going to have an increasing interval, but what do we write it in terms of? We write it in terms of the x value. So from zero to infinity, right? Because this keeps extending. The y values are just going to keep going up from x values zero to infinity like that. Right, so that's how you write it. You look at the behavior of the y values left to right, right? Decreasing from x values negative infinity to zero, and then increasing after from x values zero to positive infinity. Let's do another example. So let's do a completely different kind of function. So let's do uh, one over x minus three. Okay, so graphically how that's gonna look, right? It's one over x shifted three units to the right, so there's going to be a vertical asymptote there. So this function is basically going to look like this. All right, so what's happening to this function, or what's happening specifically to the y values as we read from left to right? Well, as we read from left to right, so we're going this way, going along the function, what's happening to the y values? Well, notice that they're always decreasing, right? All the way, this extends all the way like over here, right? And even though it's getting closer and closer to zero, it doesn't hit zero. And as we're reading left to right, right? The Y values, they're going down at first very slowly, they're going down and then they pick up speed and go down faster and faster, right? That rate of change goes faster. So the Y values throughout this whole portion of the graph, they are decreasing they are going down when you're reading left to right. And so we would have a decreasing interval. But again, we write it in terms of the x values. So the y values are decreasing, right? The y values are decreasing from x values negative infinity, because this goes all the way to negative infinity, to this x value of three. Okay, but it doesn't touch that x value of three because there's a vertical asymptote there. But it keeps going and going and going all the way down, right? The y values keep decreasing, right, infinitely. So from x values negative infinity to an x value of three, there is a decreasing interval. The y values are going down. Okay, what about this other portion of the graph? So now, once we're done with this portion of the graph, we go to this one. Again, read from left to right. Well, notice the y values are also decreasing there, right? As we're reading from left to right, the y values are going down as we're reading from left to right, as we're going this way in terms of the reference, right? And so this would actually be another decreasing interval. And it's basically decreasing all the way to x values of positive infinity because this keeps going down and down. It keeps approaching zero, but it doesn't hit zero. But it's continually decreasing and decreasing, right? It maybe hits a y value of like 0.1, and then it hits a y value of 0 0.01, and then 0 0.001, right? The y values keep going lower and lower infinitely without actually touching that y value of zero. Right, so the y values are decreasing from x values, we write in terms of the x values, from an x value of three, not including the three because there's a vertical asymptote there. So from three to positive infinity, right? So there's actually no increasing intervals on this particular function. They're only decreasing intervals, right? The y values are always going down as you read from left to right and then we write the uh, intervals in terms of the x values. Next example, let's maybe try an exponential function. So let's just try the base function y equals two to the power of x. Quick little intermission here, wanted to mention a few things quickly and we'll get right back into the question. First off, if you are getting value from this video, if you can please like the video and subscribe to my channel, it does help me out a lot. Number two, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description box and there is a link that will take you to my website, allthingsmathematics.com, where all my courses are organized so you can watch the video 
those in order for lots of the courses at the end of the chapters you can find tests that you can practice with and the tests have video solutions as well number three if you feel like you need personalized help in tutoring give me a shout i currently tutor students seven days a week over zoom both high school and university students one-on-one -on -one and in groups you can text me my contact details are on my website and lastly feel free to forward the website to any of your friends who are also taking the course who you feel can benefit from these videos as well hit me up on all my socials it's all things mathematics for all of them back to the video we go all right so how does that graph look like we know there's a horizontal asymptote at zero and it's basically like this right that's how y equals 2 to the power of x looks like so let's figure out what's the intervals of increase and decrease here well reading from left to right if we start at the end of the function which is at an x value negative infinity what's happening to the y values well as we go on the function left to right the y values they're increasing right the y values are going up and notice that they're going up all the time right from negative infinity because again there's a horizontal asymptote at zero there right it starts very close to zero and then it slowly increases and increases and then the rate of change of increase picks up after and so notice for an exponential function or this exponential function in particular two to the power of x the y values are always increasing and there's never a break right there's no vertical asymptotes or anything like that and so basically the interval of increase is from negative infinity to positive infinity right and there is no um no break right it's always increasing during the entire domain right there's never any turning point now let's we could actually while we're at it here we could discuss some transformations so like what if we had and we did this in a previous video negative 2 to the power of x well that would mean that this function would get reflected like this well then what's happening with the y values well we read from left to right the y values are going down right so this would have a decreasing interval from x values negative infinity to positive infinity right negative infinity to positive infinity we write the intervals in terms of the x values okay what about another function um let's say we had two to the power of negative x okay so if the k value is negative well it takes this function and reflects it in the y-axis remember a negative k value reflects it in the y-axis so this would be going like this that's how this function would look like and so in this case what's happening with the y values well they are decreasing right so this would have a decreasing interval from negative infinity to positive infinity okay so for an exponential uh, function the interval of increase and decrease is always going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity because that's always the domain for an exponential function um, but the question is is it going to be increasing or decreasing and that depends on how the function is going to be reflected right is it going to be reflected over the uh, x-axis y-axis basically what's happening to the y values as you read from left to right and then let's do one more example so in this one notice that we have a quadratic here it's in vertex form and so where's the vertex going to be we know the vertex is going to be at three and negative two and then what's also important is this quadratic opening up or down the a value is negative five so we know this quadratic is opening downwards okay so if we draw a rough sketch three negative two right here and the quadratic is opening downwards like that okay so what's happening with this quadratic here well again reading left to right this extends right infinitely reading left to right so notice that we're going up the quadratic right so we're going upwards the y values are going up and so on this portion of the graph here 
the y values are increasing. So we're going to have an increasing interval, but what do we write it in terms of? The x values. And basically, this quadratic, it's opening, or sorry, it's not opening, uh, it's increasing from x values negative infinity, right? Because this extends all the way to x values of negative infinity, right? This is going to end up going like past the y-axis, right? If we kind of extend this like this, right? So from negative infinity, from x size negative infinity, it's going to be increasing, right? In case you can't see that this is a little bit more zoomed in. So if we zoom out a bit more, basically what's happening, it's increasing. The y values are increasing as we read from left to right from x values negative infinity to the x value of 3. So negative infinity to 3. Okay, not to this y value of negative 2. Remember, we write the intervals in terms of the x values, not the y values. So it's increasing from x values negative infinity to 3. Okay, and then it stops here. At this vertex, there's going to be a turning point. So nothing's happening at that specific x value of 3. But then what happens after? The y values decrease as we read from left to right, right? The y values are going down. So there would be a decreasing interval from an x value of 3, not including the 3, just right after 3. I like 3.000001, right? Infinite zeros. So starting at that x value very close to 3 all the way to x values infinity. The y values are going down. All right? And that's basically how intervals of increase and decrease work. So you may have to watch that again. Again, what's kind of confusing is you're looking at the behavior of the y values to know whether the function is increasing or decreasing from left to right. But what you have to write it in terms of is the x value. So notice like this vertex, right? It was at 3 and negative 2. Notice this negative 2, we didn't write that at all when we were talking about the intervals, right? You write it in terms of the x values. But you have to look at the y values to know whether it's increasing or decreasing. And that's a wrap for the video. And that is the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to find more videos like this, you can go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all my courses are organized for both high school and university. All the videos are organized by chapter. Also, if you have any questions, you can hit me up. My contact details are also on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.